In this unit, we'll explain how to add style to your web pages using CSS. In the last unit, we created some simple but well structured content using HTML. While structure is important, the default styles used by browsers to display content doesn't make for very interesting web pages. So now, let's look at how we can build some style onto that structure. A good way to demonstrate the power of CSS is using the site CSS Zen Garden. This is a showcase of how adding different CSS styles to the same content can radically alter the design. So people submitting designs start with some structured HTML, similar to that you've been creating. They then add a single line of code to link this HTML to a CSS style sheet. The style sheet contains instructions for how browsers should display the elements in the web page. Changing these instructions changes the appearance of the site like this, or this, or this. You get the idea. The important concept is that adding CSS changes the style of the structure elements without changing the structure itself. That makes CSS very useful. Separating out style in this way lets us update the look of our entire site by changing just one style rule. It also means new content will automatically be shown with your styles. CSS is also just a much richer language for defining styles than is possible with HTML, as we'll see in a moment. But how does CSS actually work? We start with some HTML, and in a browser, that will have the default style. Using a CSS rule, we can override that. Here, we use a p-selector to match all paragraphs, and a style rule that gives them a red background. New paragraphs will automatically have that style as they match the p-selector. Other HTML elements, such as headings, won't, as they don't match the p-selector. This is the basis of all CSS. Match a selector, apply a style. Now let's see how Dreamweaver helps us create CSS. Most CSS action in Dreamweaver happens in the CSS panel. Let's start by simply adding an existing style sheet to one of our pages by attaching it. You can see that the page immediately changes to show the new styles. These styles are also displayed in the CSS panel from where we can edit them. To remind you, at this stage all we've actually done is add a link to an existing style sheet. If we remove that and add another style sheet, you will of course see a different set of styles being applied to the page. Now let's change some of these styles. From the CSS panel we select a selector and then click Edit. That brings up the CSS rule definition window, which provides a simple graphical way to create CSS styles. So for example, I can remove the background image from the page, and instead set a background colour. Having done that, notice that the text in the page has become unreadable. To fix that, we'll add a new style to paragraphs. So again, select the element we want to target, and click Edit. Now change the colour, and apply it to see the changes. Notice that while paragraphs have changed, other text elements haven't, because they're not paragraphs. This, for example, is a heading 3. To change this, we need to find the right selector and edit it. And this time, we'll do it directly within the CSS panel. Here, we see that the link styles clash with our background. So let's fix that. Unfortunately, our style sheet doesn't already have a rule for links so we need to add one. With the A tag selected, we go to the CSS panel and click Add Style. Dreamweaver detects that we have the A tag selected and creates the appropriate CSS selector. We can now use the same CSS rule window to add styles, just as we did when we were editing them. So let's change the colour. Well, that looks better, but perhaps it would look neater without the underline. And the property we want this time is text decoration, which we set to None. So that's starting to look a little more like the kind of page I want. However, to do some more sophisticated styling, we need to understand the different kinds of selectors available to us. So far, we've used HTML tags as CSS selectors. This means that it matches all instances of a tag, such as the paragraph. In some cases, though, we might want to target specific elements. And we can do this by adding a class to the HTML tag. This acts as a flag to say, this tag is different and so we can target just that instance of the tag with our CSS. 
And finally, we can use IDs. These are similar to classes, but are only used once per page. So to show you an example, here we select the HTML element with the ID header. We then target this with CSS, just as we did with tag selectors. So we select the header selector and change the styles associated with it. And by combining selectors and style rules, you can achieve some very sophisticated styling for your pages, just like on CSS and NGarden. And that's what we wanted to explore in the practical for this unit. So when you're ready, work through the tasks and start adding some style to your pages.